Hello and welcome to this yin yoga practice with a bolster. And welcome back to Devi Daily Yoga where it's not about how your yoga looks, it's all about how it feels. So we will be moving through a nurturing and restorative set of yin yoga poses that all use the bolster. If you have a yoga block, you might also want to have that handy, although you could work with a folded towel or blanket instead. I've also got a blanket underneath me, which is optional if you just want an extra layer of cushioning and comfort. So go ahead and get cozy in your space. Practice begins right now. We'll start in supported child's pose. With your bolster at one half of your mat, you can pull it in so that it's in between your knees. And as you come forward, the head and face can turn one way on the edge of the bolster. Another option here, especially for people with longer torsos, might be to pull the bolster back to be more under your pelvis and have a block or a folded cushion underneath your forehead. And this way you have space to breathe. Make yourself cozy, hugging around the bolster if that feels good and nurturing for you. And one of the things that's really nice about practicing with a bolster is that we can get this contact of the belly, of the navel area to the bolster, and we can just feel this sense of support and contact. More of the body being held. And with your next inhale, can you inhale right into the support of the bolster? And exhale, soften into it a little bit more deeply. Giving yourself time and space now to arrive. Sensing your nervous system beginning to calm down. And sensing your breath beginning to regulate. Nothing that you need to make happen here. Just allowing it to happen. Take a full breath into the back body now. And exhale. Soften into this bolster. And slowly now come up out of child's pose and sit to one side of the bolster for a twist. You could leave the bolster like this and come into your twist like this, which is maybe more common, but I've been enjoying this variation lately. So I'll offer this turning the bolster 90 degrees, pulling it right into your hip. And then as you come forward, we've got this really nice support against the lower ribs and the belly where we will rest for two minutes. You can have your forehead resting on your forearms or you could use a block or a folded blanket or some other kind of support under your forehead. Then you can think about gently softening down through the right ribs and gently extending out toward the left through your left ribs. And tuning into the breath now with this nice contact of bolster against belly, bolster against low ribs, the nurturing sense of contact as you breathe in to the pressure here.
slowly now coming up from the twist and turn your torso so you're more just directly side oriented for a side bending stretch. We'll come down with the ribs supported. The low ribs want to be supported right in the middle of the bolster and the knees can just be on top of each other for this. Now, as we come down, you can use a block or a folded blanket under your head. This is just one option, which is a little bit less intense, a little easier as we take this right arm or whichever arm is on top up and over to stretch into the side body, the ribs, and you could roll your torso back or forward to see exactly what angle feels best. The other option is without supporting the head and instead using your left arm or whichever arm is on the bottom as your head support. Finding a place where your body is comfortable resting. Again, maybe you like rolling toward the back a little more. Maybe you like rolling toward the front a little more. It's a wonderful opening in the side body, the armpits, the rib cage. And you can begin now to breathe right into this space in the side of the body. Deep breath in. Long breath out. slowly now coming up out of the side bend and we'll shift to the second side starting with the twist. Legs come onto the other side of the body as you pull your bolster right in next to your hip and turn to the side getting this nice contact of upper abdomen to the bolster and finding a comfortable resting place for your head whether it's on folded hands or on a block or a folded blanket. And thinking about lifting up and out through the right side or whichever is the back side of your ribs and then the other side is softening down toward the bolster. Now, can you fill your upper abdomen with the breath and release the upper abdomen, softening this midsection of your body down into the bolster? And can you fully relax into this sense of support, knowing that you are held knowing that you're safe. And each breath is a caress of your entire system, a massage from the inside.
slowly come back up now and shift into position for the side bend where we'll bring the knees on top of one another and position the bolster so it's going to support your lowest ribs right at the center of the bolster. And you could either take your arm out to the side, resting the head on the arm, or you could slide that block under the head and let the bottom arm come forward. And sensing where the top of the arc of your curved torso is, somewhere around the low ribs on the top side. And can you take a breath in to expand right into this space? And exhale, feeling the diaphragm rising up toward the heart. Inhale, left side of the diaphragm coming all the way down to the low belly. Exhale. Completely melting into this shape now. Slowly release, coming up and roll toward the bolster this time. We're going to be on the belly with your navel right on the bolster, coming into a seal pose. So seal poses with straight arms. You could modify this by staying down on the elbows. Otherwise, we're coming up. The hands can be perhaps as wide as your mat, or you can play around with the positioning of the hands. They could come narrower, they could come closer to you or farther away. And it can be useful to have the help of the stickiness of your mat. So if your blanket's in the way, you could fold it back. This is my favorite way to do seal pose with this really great support against the navel, against the low belly. Take some of the weight off of the arms. And wherever you are, take a deep breath in. Expand the belly forward into your bolster. As you exhale, your sacrum and lower back soften toward the front of the body. Inviting the spine to soften. Invite the sacrum to soften. Legs, thighs, buttocks relaxed. Feet relaxed.
and slowly release down and lift your hips to come into child's pose where we're going to place the forehead on the bolster and let the elbows also be supported by the bolster. Taking a rebound here in child's pose. In the time of the rebound, we simply feel the effects of the pose we just did. Let the body rest, let the energy flow, and feel the rhythm of your breath. Slowly now, rise up, and we will set up for supported saddle or supported butterfly. And a couple of options of how to do supported saddle today. We're going to start with the most intense version, and then we'll move to the less intense. So don't be scared off by this first one. But I have been enjoying this way of getting into saddle with a bolster, sitting on top of the bolster. And this, by the way, could be your variation. If you feel a nice stretch in the front of the thighs, you could stay right here. This is also a good way to lengthen and stretch the tops of the feet and the fronts of the ankles. But if you're going to come back, you've got your block to support your head and make your way back carefully. So this is choice number one. And choice number two is to do more what we usually do with a bolster, which is to sit in front of the bolster between your feet and to come back. In which case you don't need a block unless you want to use the block under your bolster like so for a little bit of extra lift and cushioning. So if you find it difficult to come all the way back or just too intense, this is a nice option. And another option, which is the least intense, if your knees or legs don't like to do that saddle shape, then we've got a simple butterfly coming back either on the inclined bolster or on a flat bolster. So take the time to see what your body likes the most today. And once you have found your variation, make any final little adjustments so that you can be sure you feel fully supported and in a nurtured place. If you are in a position that doesn't feel nurturing right now, then try something less intense. And wherever you are, find a nice deep breath in and exhale. Enjoying the opening of your chest. The back bend happening in your lower spine and sacrum. I 
And can you soften your face? Release your jaw, relax your tongue. And relax the throat so that your breath flows freely and easily. Slowly now, come up from your saddle or butterfly. Make your way to a rebound, resting on the back with your bolster under your knees, going the side way. Make yourself comfortable so that you can feel the energy moving and flowing through your body. And bend the knees now, hug them into your chest and gently rock side to side. And now roll onto one side and we'll make our way up for tadpole pose. So in, for tadpole, we just begin in child's pose, straddling the bolster and coming down, maybe letting the knees come wider to the point where we start feeling a groin stretch. This might mean they come off the edges of your mat. So you wanna make sure you have adequate cushioning under your knees so that you're not limited with how your knees, how wide your knees can go. And we can make this more intense by opening the feet, less intense by keeping the feet in, keeping the knees in. Resting the head on the bolster. Or second option is to pull the bolster farther back so that you have that space to breathe and rest your head on a block or something else. Finding your variation making sure it's something that feels supportive and nurturing. And sensing the stretch that you're feeling in your inner thigh on each side.
As you breathe in, can you fill the back of your pelvis and the inner thigh, inner groin area? And exhale, softening into this opening. Now coming up and shifting once again into a resting position with your bolster turning sideways to support your knees. the energy and the feelings flowing through your body. And bend your knees now, hug them into your chest. And gently rock side to side. And now release the legs and place your feet on the floor so that you can lift your hips, slide your bolster up so it comes under your hips. And we want to feel centered and supported here for our upside down dragon pose. We'll take the right knee in toward the chest. And you can clasp behind the thigh or in front of the shin. The target area is the stretch of this front of the left thigh and the front of the left hip. So if you want to try to get into this area deeper, if you're not feeling enough, another way you could approach it is to do a one-legged happy baby pose here. Or maybe even extend into the leg for kind of an upside down dragon split. So it's not about getting the most complicated or fancy pose in your body. It's about stretching this front of the left thigh and the hip flexors on the left side. 
finding what works best for your body today. And now can you draw the breath down into the front of the left hip? And can you exhale to soften into this area a little bit more? Releasing right leg forward, bend the left knee in. And once again, choices to clasp in the area behind the thigh or in front of the shin, or to take left hand to the foot for one-legged happy baby, or upside down dragon split. Targeting now the front of the right thigh and the front of the right hip. Breathe in to fill the lungs. Exhale. Feel the back of the neck lengthen. And slowly release, extending the left leg long. Interlace the fingers, press the palms up and away and just give yourself a big long stretch as you inhale. And now as you exhale, bend both knees in to take it into happy baby pose with this bolster under the hips. So hold on to the feet or if that's not accessible, then take one hand to each knee as you open the knees wide. And if you've got the feet, you can choose how much the knees stay bent, or it might feel good to extend the legs a bit. This is really good for the low back. And you can always hold the insides of the feet instead of the outsides. Everyone's a little different here, so it really doesn't matter how exactly you hold the feet. And let's take a nice deep breath into the low back and exhale.
release the legs and extend your legs long now so that we can come into golden gate pose and adjust your bolster as needed. You might want to just shift it down an inch or two, whatever you need to do so that once you extend your legs, you feel very supported and balanced and grounded as we rest in this golden gate pose, which is kind of a rebound pose, but also a little bit of a back bend. Feeling this gentle opening of the front of the body. Back of the neck is long. Back of the shoulders firmly anchored into the ground. Palms facing up with the arms at whatever angle feels good. Nice gentle opening between the legs, just so that energy can flow freely through your hips and thighs and lower back. Releasing to bend your knees in and you can readjust your bolster to set up for figure four pose. And for figure four, we will take the right ankle over the left knee and clasp behind the thigh or in front of the shin. I'm going to do one minute here and then one minute in. Uh, supine shoelace pose where they're both in the same family of poses. They're both intended to stretch into the glutes on the right side. As we do this external rotation of the leg, this is a really good way to keep the hips and knees healthy. Nice deep breath into the low belly, lower back. Exhale. So our choices in yin yoga are many. We always have many choices of exactly how to align the body. And this is because in yin, we really want to honor individual anatomy, the way we all differ from one person to the next. So one of the options here is to narrow the space between the knees and you can experiment with that. So your right ankle would come farther over and you might be more on the shin. And then at a certain point, if you keep doing that, it's like, oh, there's no more room for my right arm. Let me take it out and hold on to my left foot left hand to right foot. And here, if we bring the knees all the way together or as close as they wanna go, we're in our upside down shoelace pose. And this is why these two poses are really just variations of the same pose. They are both in the shoelace archetype when we get into the underlying philosophy of yin yoga. As you hold your feet, you can gently pull them toward you. You could be holding the around the bottoms of the feet or the tops of the feet, whatever kind of grip makes most sense for the position your body's in.
and slowly now release the legs and switch sides beginning with figure four, left ankle over the right knee. Clasp behind the thigh or in front of the shin. And when I say left ankle over the right knee, that doesn't mean there's any exact perfect place. Again, you could be narrower and you could be more, um, more having the outside of the calf rather than the ankle over the knee. Target area here is the left glutes. And find a deep breath in. Exhale. And now we can begin to experiment with narrowing this, bringing the knees toward one another and taking the left hand to the right foot, right hand to left foot, pull the feet toward you for your shoelace pose, continuing with the same target area, the left glutes. Release the legs. And from here, keep the knees in as we just extend them up into the air to come into supported snail pose. Here we could choose to have the hands supporting the back of the thighs or the back of the calves, or maybe it's easy for you to reach your toes or the soles of your feet, or even use a strap up there. But we don't need a strap. Gravity is doing the work here, unless you have maybe more tension in the legs and you're staying more over there, then a strap around the feet could be quite helpful. Otherwise, gravity can take them over the head. Your arms could just relax out to the sides. And if your body enjoys a full snail pose where you lift the hips off the block or off the bolster, go for it. Otherwise, we're just gonna be more supported here Continuing with this theme of having the lower back and sacrum supported and held. Gentle stretch of the backs of the hamstrings and the low back. And take a nice deep breath in and exhale.
releasing now. Take the feet slowly back down to the floor. And we will slowly shift into our supported Shavasana to rest the body completely. Bolster under the knees. You may opt to put an extra blanket on the top of your body or extra clothes to keep yourself warm. An eye pillow over your eyes. and settling in for a nice long rest where your body is completely supported by the earth, by your bolster. Any adjustments you need to make for total comfort, maybe more width between the knees, more of a wide, generous angle with the arms, so your body can really be spread out. Think about getting as much of your back body in contact with the floor as possible. Soften now your forehead in the center of the forehead between the eyebrows. Take a deep breath in through this third eye center and exhale from your third eye center. And feel into the throat as it relaxes and opens and take a breath in through this open throat. Breathe out through this open, relaxed throat chakra. And now breathe into your heart chakra. And breathe out from the heart chakra, softening around the heart. And breathe into the upper abdomen, solar plexus region. Exhale, softening, feeling this upper abdomen come back toward the spine. And breathe now into the low belly. Feel it expand. Exhale from the low belly. Feel it come in and back toward the spine, toward the sacrum. And now the biggest breath down into the base of the pelvis. Big breath out all the way from the base of the pelvis and the root of the spine. And from the root chakra now all the way up to the crown chakra. Can you feel your breath circulating up and down? Inhaling in through the tailbone, all the way up the spine over the crown of the head and exhaling down over the front of the body. One more deep breath in from the root to the crown. And exhale. And now resting, feeling everything that's happening inside.
And now let's begin to stretch out into the fingers and toes. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, stretch the arms overhead, interlace fingers, press the palms up and away as you stretch down long through your legs. And bend the knees and gently roll over onto the side. And very slowly press yourself up to come into a comfortable seat. And that is our practice for today. Thank you so much for practicing with Devi Daily Yoga. If you like this practice, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell. And if you would like to deepen into yin yoga with me, check out my membership site and my yin yoga teacher training. Those links are down below and also here in the cards. Thanks again. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you next time.